President Volodymyr Zelensky's plan to end Ukraine's nearly three-year war with Russia has received mixed reactions from Western allies so far. The victory plan that Zelensky outlined at home and abroad includes a formal invitation for Ukraine to join NATO and permission to use Western long-range missiles to strike military targets in Russia, two steps Kiev's allies have been reluctant to support before. U.S. backing is crucial if Zelensky is to get support from other allies for proposals he believes are necessary to strengthen Ukraine's position on the battlefield and ahead of any peace negotiations. But analysts say the Biden administration is unlikely to make a decision before the U.S. presidential election on November the 5th as it may not appeal to voters. They seem to be just doing very little now and waiting for the election said Phillips O'Brien, Professor of Strategic Studies at the University of St. Andrews, Scotland. So much of the strategy will live or die in Washington. Analysts said the plan is a step in the right direction for Ukraine's military efforts. They also described it as ambitious, given allies' fears of escalation with nuclear-armed Russia. Ukraine has previously secured Western support for requests once deemed unrealistic, such as Patriot air defense systems and F-16 jets. Presenting the plan now puts on the radar for the next U.S. administration, analysts said, though it's unknown how the next president will receive it. After returning from making his case to the European Council, Zelensky said he expects the White House to provide feedback. They will be here soon with some form of response, he said. Will the plan bring victory to Ukraine? Zelensky laid out the five-point plan as Ukraine's troops struggle to hold back Russian's slow but steady advances in eastern Ukraine. The plan includes three secret annexes that were presented only to some leaders. It also addresses partners' concerns about Ukraine's strategy after the failed summer 2023 counter-offensive. Zelensky described the main goal as to strengthen us and force Russia to come to the negotiating table with all partners. The plan won't immediately alter the battlefield situation, but it will help Ukraine wear down Russia and give more means to keep going in the attrition war. I think people were potentially expecting some sort of more operational plan on winning the war, said Justin Crump, a former British tank commander who heads Sibyline, a strategic advisory firm. That's a naive opinion to have expected a plan to have provided operational details that would obviously be of use to the enemy. Some Ukrainian analysts blamed the name of the plan, adding that it was likely chosen for marketing purposes. Ukrainian analyst Yuri Bodan said the goal is to get resources. To win such a war of attrition, Ukraine needs to increase its resilience and exhaust its opponent, said Glib Volosky, an analyst from a Ukrainian think tank Come Back Alive Initiatives Center. The side that falls last wins. What was the Allies' response? U.S. reaction was muted and non-committal, though it did issue a new $425 million package of security assistance for Ukraine the day that Zelensky presented the plan to lawmakers. It's not my position to publicly evaluate his plan. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said, We have been supporting him by providing security assistance in a major way for two and a half years. We are going to continue to do that. In Europe, reactions ranged from categorical opposition to strong support. French Foreign Minister Jean-Noël Barot stated in Kiev on Saturday that he will work with Ukrainian officials to rally other nations to get behind the proposal. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz stood by his refusal to supply Taurus long-range cruise missiles to Kiev. Our position is clear. We are supporting Ukraine as strongly as possible, he said. At the same time, we are taking care that NATO does not become a party to the war so that this war doesn't culminate in an even bigger catastrophe. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, widely seen as having the warmest relation of an EU leader with Russian President Vladimir Putin called Zelensky's plan more than frightening in a Facebook post. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov mocked Zelensky's plan as ephemeral and Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova called it a set of incoherent slogans. What's at stake for Ukraine? Without an invitation to join NATO, Ukraine won't have an assurance that its geopolitical future will not be a bargaining chip with Russia, said Volosky, the Ukrainian analyst. Ukrainian officials say there are no other guarantees for Ukraine besides NATO to protect against Russia's aggression after the war. Zelensky made ambiguous comments suggesting that nuclear weapons are the only other security alternative. Some thought he was talking about self-made nuclear weapons sparking strong reaction among Ukrainians, many of whom were pessimistic about the prospects for an invitation to NATO.
Zelensky later clarified that he was highlighting the dire situation for Ukraine by referencing the 1994 Budapest Memorandum in which Ukraine relinquished its nuclear arsenal in exchange for security guarantees for major nuclear powers, including the UK, the US and Russia. Without Western support, Ukraine will struggle to endure a protracted war with Russia backed by North Korea, Iran and China. If Ukraine falls, it will be forced to negotiate on Russia's terms. Getting help from outside is a key part of winning the war, O'Brien said. The Israeli military said Sunday it had struck more than 100 military targets in the last day belonging to Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. The army released footage said to show airstrikes on the Hezbollah targets in the area of al Matmura. Israel has meanwhile ramped up strikes on the southern neighborhood of Beirut known as the Dahia, a crowded residential area. Hezbollah has a strong presence there, but it is also home to large numbers of civilians and people unaffiliated with the Lebanese militant group. A year of escalating tensions boiled over into all-out war last month. Israel sent ground troops into Lebanon at the start of October. Israel's war against Hezbollah, the Iran-backed militant group, stretches far inside Lebanon, and its airstrikes in recent weeks have killed more than 1,700 people, about a quarter of whom were women and children, according to local health authorities. Some of the more than 50 Israelis killed by Hezbollah over the past year were hit by anti-tank missiles. The Israeli military said Sunday that more than 170 rockets were launched from Lebanon at northern Israel. Israeli firefighters worked to extinguish a blaze in northern Israel Sunday after rockets were launched from Lebanon. Israeli police officers were seen next to the site of a fire directing traffic after an attack in the area near the town of Rosh Pina in northern Israel. The Israeli army updated Sunday that approximately 160 projectiles that were fired by Hezbollah crossed into Israel. Hezbollah began firing rockets into Israel a day after Hamas' October 7 attack. After nearly a year of tit-for-tat fighting with Hezbollah, Israel launched its ground invasion into southern Lebanon on October 1, 2024, and has since sent thousands of troops into the rugged terrain. Israel's war against Hezbollah, the Iran-backed militant group, stretches far inside Lebanon, and its airstrikes in recent weeks have killed more than 1,700 people about a quarter of them women and children, according to local health authorities. Some of the more than 50 Israelis killed by Hezbollah over the past year were hit by anti-tank missiles.